Welcome to Bath. We have come for a big day out, so let's start the show. Well, any big day out requires a big breakfast to get you going, and we had that in this lovely cafe that we found called Same, Same, But Different. And when you said the name of it inside, Paul, I thought you meant, is he talking about this episode? No, I saw it on the reflection on the glass window. Ah, right. So you had salmon, isn't that right? Salmon on toast, and then there was like a pickled, um, salad on top and was it okay it was fine and i had scrambled egg on toast with bacon and the toast was nice and soft which is always good for my teeth okay let's get going well we're walking up gay street don't laugh paul no <laughs> what do you know about bath uh i know that it is called bath or bath spa. Yes. They are renowned for their um, Roman baths because yeah. the Romans did occupy this city back, I don't know what the exact dates are. About 100 years ago? Maybe more. <laughs> I'm joking. And yes, for the hot springs. I don't think we're going in there today. Although having said that, there are cold springs coming out of the sky at the moment. But did you know that Bath is also renowned for its Georgian buildings oh, and wow. you know, just behind us here and in that vein that the TV drama Bridgerton was partly filmed here. Did not know that. You know it now. Wow, look at this. Well, this is one of those Georgian splendors, and this area is called Circus, or The Circus, depending what way you want to call it. So do you think that they had elephants and lions and men on trapeze and all that sort of stuff back in the day? I think it's a good way to display the circus folk. Well, I don't think it's anything to do no, with that. Not. Um, because if you think about it, we have in London, you've got Piccadilly Circus, Oxford Circus. I think it's sort of like a, a rounded area because a circus is held in the round, normally. There really are some fabulous buildings here, aren't they, Paul? I think some of them might be discoloured because of the wet atmosphere. Well, it's, I think it's sandstone, is that what it mm, is? Probably. And yeah, they probably just need a, a bit of scrubbing, but no, see? they are all natural. Now, we mentioned Bridgerton before, but did you know that other TV shows and films have come here to use Bath as a location? Which ones? Well, the ITV drama, MacDonald and Dodds, it was filmed here. And oh. it's in its fourth series now, so it obviously proves very popular with the viewers, and I'm sure Bath is part of that. Oh. What do you think of this telephone box, Paul? Oh, well, it's very, very different. It's grey and red. Yeah, it certainly is. And those, you could say, are rather royal colours, don't you think? Well, I suppose purple is more of a royal colour, mm -hmm. but there is a royal connection because we are probably approaching the most famous part of oh, Bath. Wow. 
and that is Royal Crescent. Now, when you see this in a moment, you will think, ah, yes, I've seen that before, probably in Bridgerton, but um, it is the most famous architecturally area of the city. And there it is. Well, we saw Circus or the Circus before. Well, the Royal Crescent is similar, but on a much grander scale. Mm. And there's also a museum here as well, the Royal Crescent Museum. So you could go in and find out more information about the area. Wow, how come you know so much about bath markets? Oh, well, you see, I did my research. I picked up the Bath Official Visitor Guide to 2024. And it's absolutely fabulous because it contains lots of information about tours that you can do, hotels that you can stay at if you're going to be here a little bit longer. And also that's where I find out the information about Bridgerton, you see. So I didn't really know that before we came here. Hmm. Well, there do seem to be a lot of art galleries in Bath as well. And one thing I've noticed is that there's a lot of artists actually in the streets just behind me here. Well, we've done so much walking, Paul, that I think it's time that we took an Uber. What do you think? Yes, there's an Uber right behind us. <laughs> there certainly is. But you have spied something else, the Mercy in Action Charity Boutique. Yes. Now, you do like to go to charity shops, don't you, Paul? Well, I don't really want to spend too much on fashion or anything else like that. So I think it's a good way to give your money to a good cause, I think. Well, we got some nice things in there. Yeah, we did. We might show them to you later, but we might not, because at <laughs> least one of them we are going to use for a future episode. Time for sunglasses, is it, Paul? You know me. It's never, it's never too early for some sunglasses. We are back on Gay Street, and... This street is known for its museums, which honour two of Britain's most famous authors, both of whom spent part of their lives in Bath. And in fact, the city inspired their writing. They are Jane Austen and Mary Shelley. Well, Jane Austen was known for her novels, including Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility. And also Emma. Oh, yes. Now, I've got some sensibilities myself, so I don't think I'm going to go over there because there is a chap dressed in period costume and he might question why we are filming. But that is the Jane Austen Centre over there. It's a museum, so you can find out lots of information about the author. Well, Paul, this is Mary Shelley's House of Frankenstein. Now, Mary Shelley was another very famous author. Oh, what you do? I thought... <laughs> okay, Franken famous for... Frankenstein. What can you tell us about Frankenstein? Misunderstood monster? Ah, well, you see, that's where you're wrong. Because Frankenstein wasn't a monster. Frankenstein was the creator of the monster, which is why it is Frankenstein's monster. Okay. But just like you, most people think that the monster is Frankenstein. Now, this is interesting in here because uh, there is a lot of scaffolding, but you can still sort of make out most of it. They have a multi-sensory museum and escape room. No thanks. <laughs> but it might be worth visiting. Oh, look at this, HMV shop. 
this HMV has a different design than the one that we have in Uxbridge. Yes, it's very unusual to find an HMV that is actually called the HMV shop. Well, the sun has decided to come out for us, Paul, and we are looking around some of the fabulous shops here in Bath because there really is something for everyone from boutiques independent. and independent shops, yes, to your chain stores and also lots of restaurants. In fact, we are going to a very special restaurant for lunch later on. It's a really busy Saturday while we are filming this episode and there is some construction taking place in the city as well. There's quite a lot of scaffolding up and over here you can see where the work is taking place. They have put up some rather nice groovy pictures of what it is going to look like when it is finished. So it says delivering baths, city centre security improvements. Hmm, I'm not sure why they need security improvements, but if it makes the place look even better than it is already, then why not? It's quite a big city centre, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, I think that it is rather spread out. It I certainly think, is. I think that it went as far back as George Street and beyond, and I think this bit is going towards the railway station. And look, there is even a Chinese corridor over there. Shall oh we go take a look? God. Well, what's all this then? We have the lanterns up, don't we? Uh -huh. I think this leads to the supermarket upstairs. Oh, right, a supermarket there. And do we think that that's it? Well, it's like a sort of an indoor, outdoor, spliced kind of market area. So there's a little Chinese bit over here. And then there are other cafes down this way, and other little shops, charity shops, so you'd like that. I didn't even know that these little streets existed in Bath, so oh it's good God. to explore them. I always think a good way of exploring a new city is to go on the tour bus, and in Bath they've got the toot bus. Is he going to toot for us today? Nah. What do you think, Paul? You want to go for a toot? Why don't you tower above the competition? So please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Paul and Marcus. New church music. Bath Abbey is a fabulous building and if you want to spend £7.50 to visit it, you could, but we are not doing that, so I hope you have enjoyed the pictures from outside. So this building just here is the Roman Baths. Well, if you do fancy going to one of the bathhouses, you are most likely going to have to pay as well, such as at the Roman Baths here. The free walking tours start right here. Ah, very good, Paul. So you can actually walk around the baths for free, but you can't actually go and dip your toes no, in the baths, I suppose. So, this is a handy guide for the bath city centre toilets. You do have to pay 
20p to go in most of these places, but it is good to know where the toilet facilities are. You will also find in Bath that there are lots of entertainers, people singing, so it's quite difficult if you're trying to actually talk about toilets or something like that. Another bathhouse, this is the pump room for kings and queens. The city of Bath is a World Heritage Site. The World Heritage Symbol commemorates the inscription by UNESCO of the city of Bath on the World Heritage List in 1987. This identifies the city as a masterpiece of human creative genius whose protection must be the concern of all. So we have just had a lovely lunch at the Ivy here in Bath. So what did you have, Paul? I had the shepherd's pie, which you would never ever fathom having. Well, it's funny because I used to have it before I knew it contained lamb. The cottage pie, which they didn't have, is the one which contains beef. And I was actually in the mood for something like that. However, what I did have I had something off the brunch menu. Mm. It was a brunch special and it was a sweet and savoury waffle. So it was a mixture of blueberries, avocado, cream, bacon, all mixed together. So was it was it like basically, a yeah, so it was almost like having like a meal brunch. followed by like a dessert all in one. Lucky you. And you have joined the Ivy Loyalty Club, haven't you, Paul? And how does, what does that entail? So I think that you get points. I think I think it's all a matter of getting you to spend and have loyalty towards the brand. And what do points make? Uh, rewards. <laughs> Prizes. Yes, that too. Oh look, the Transport Trust Transport Heritage Site, Bath Spa Station, 1841. Focal point of I.K. Brunel's Great Western Railway through Bath, sympathetically designed in the pioneering phase of railway construction. Well, Bath Spa Station is the gateway to Bath, and GWR trains run here from London Paddington and also Bristol Temple Meads. And did you know, Paul, that it is only 12 minutes to Bristol from here? I did not know that. I didn't realise it was so close. 
Well, our big day out has come to an end, so we hope that you have enjoyed today's show. But before we go, Paul has a message for you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel today. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button because it will help our channel along our goal to reach a thousand or two thousand subscribers this year. And if you have liked the video, hit the like button and we do also enjoy reading your comments. So keep them coming. Until next time, we will see you at a later time. Thank you. Bye.